Hey there, it's time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk number 62. Wow. Go figure. How, how we've been able to do it for, for all this time, who knows? Anyway, George isn't here because nope. he's still off on his glamping trip. And uh, But Tim is an accomplished engineer and has his own studio and helps people with their home studios. So I figured he's just as good. Let's talk tech. All right. If you got yeah. questions, throw them in the chat room. Uh, tech questions about home studios, all that stuff. We want to hear from you in the chat room right now so we can get to those. Anyway, time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connection for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hi there. I'm Dan Leonard. Tim Friedlander. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. B S Tech Talk Tech right. Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk Tech Talk We're gonna talk. talk We're gonna talk tech Talk Tech, talk tech. We're talking Good. tech Better than Tech Talk I don't talk Tech Talk You guys want to know about home studio stuff mm -hmm. And Tim and I happen to know an awful lot about home studios because we've built our own studios and, and Yes Yes And helped many many people build their home studios And uh, you know it. It really doesn't depend on who you are, but it is a matter of having the right space in which to record. As far as I'm concerned, it's the most important thing. It's acoustics is 90% of the quality of your sound. Absolutely. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do that go wrong with your sound, mm -hmm. but usually it's yeah. something exterior. And so we're going to talk about that. If you've got a question, again, throw it in the chat room. And I know Jeff Holman is in there mm. monitoring the chat room with like he's glued on it and we can uh, get those questions answered for you. And those are important questions because yes. they're about your home studio. Yes. So anyway, um, let's talk about our philosophies of home mm -hmm. studios. But first, yeah. actually, I have to remind you that one of the things that, uh, that George and I do when George is here is we help you with your home studios mm -hmm. and we all have businesses. Now I take it. You suggest to people, do you actually have a system where you consult with people and say, I'm going to help you build your home studio? Or is it more along the lines of why don't you try this? And why don't you try that? It, it, it kind of, it depends on what um, I don't, I don't do it as a living. Right. You don't, uh, you don't have so a shingle. Hanging out a shingle in front of um, the people reach out to me and they ask, um, I'll give, some feedback. Um, and then if it's, you know, beyond that, if I have the time, I'll help more or I'll send them to you and you and George. Um, if it, you know, something which you've done, which I've done many times. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, beyond, you know, whether I have the time or the capability or, you know, sometimes it's, it's something so unique that it's beyond my, you know, my capability of trying to learn something and figure out something that you guys already know. We've done so, everything. Absolutely, yes. <laughs> thousands <laughs> yes. and thousands of studios. Yep. 
If you'd like to work with me, all you have to do is go over to, to my website, which is homevoiceoverstudio.com, where I have my legendary specimen collection cup. <laughs> yes. Uh, you click on that. It's a Dropbox, and you can send me an MP3 of your audio. I want it raw. I want to hear what your space sounds like, not what you're doing to your audio. Because generally, people are messing with their audio yeah. too much, and that's where they go wrong. Oh, I got some audio today that's mm -hmm. like, I have a USB mic and I'm using this interface. Uh, <laughs> okay. You could be. You know, and then I listen to the audio and I'm like, yeah, yeah. that's pretty much what's going <laughs> on. It sounds like, yeah. Uh, so, yes. uh, yeah. It, 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 there's nothing I haven't heard, although sometimes it's pretty amazing what you hear. Uh, the people I, don't realize <laughs> that the things that, are going on in their space yes I, I i actually somebody actually sent me a sample of them literally recording in a bathroom <laughs> and, and they were like is this gonna work and i, and I, I mean, a lot of times like you know i'll say wow it sounds like you're recording in a bathroom and they sent me a picture and i said you're literally recording in a bathroom like that's not gonna work they had they had put a towel over the towel rack to try and cover and cover a mirror um that's not gonna work <laughs> unfortunately because there are five other sides four yeah, other sides usually tiled <laughs> and tiled as well yes <laughs> you know and, and um, the shower door is open and it, it's, yep, yep oh god yeah, it's yeah. amazing what those can sound <laughs> like yeah, i've gotten a lot of those too but if you'd like to work with me go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and you know if they mm -hmm. want to talk to you where would they go soundbox.la soundbox.la nice hey. and simple okay yeah. makes it nice yeah. and easy so let's let's talk a little bit about mm -hmm. our philosophies of, of home, you know, home studios. Because yeah. first off, there's something I'm gonna do. And this is something we're gonna promote with world voices. Yeah. Stop using the term home studio. Because you know, we've been talking I've been talking to people all over the place. And and you know, and and producers and stuff like mm -hmm. that, and they're like, we don't trust home studios. So we can change the nomenclature. Okay. of it and okay. call it a personal professional studio right yeah. and i think if people would start using that terminology yep. then when you say if instead of saying you have a home studio which immediately invokes thoughts in somebody's head of yeah. socks hanging on the doorknob or a bra mm -hmm. or nylons or towels all those sorts of things that might be hanging out in your house recording in a bathroom recording in a bathroom in which yeah. case there'd be lots of towels, lots of towels yeah. or no towels <laughs> right. or they're on the floor <laughs> Um, I think it would behoove us all to stop calling them home voiceover studios and call them personal, personal professional, professional studios. studios. Okay. I mean, you and I have personal professional studios. Yeah. Yep. You know, I my actual ventilation system is in, your, in, my it's in your studio. <laughs> it is in my studio. Absolutely. You know. Has been for years. It keeps it nice and quiet. Yeah. Cool and quiet. Yeah, that's and that's the whole point. Yeah. What's most important to you? Now, you, you you work with a lot of people. I'm sure you work with a lot of people remotely. Aside from yep. bringing them into that fabulous facility you have, mm -hmm. uh, you know, because you're you're also a musician, a very yeah. accomplished musician. Musician originally, yeah, yeah. But originally, I'm I'm a uh, clarinet player originally, classically trained clarinet player, with, which was my undergrad degree, um, jazz guitar, and then uh, masters in music education. So music is is how I got started. Um, is how the studio got started originally. Um, I built a studio. Uh, I, I did a lot of music for P90X too. Mm -hmm. And that was our very first job that I did in my, in my studio was writing, recording 14 hours of music for P90X too. And over the years grew into a voiceover studio kind of based on the needs of the people in the community. Mm -hmm. And that's how we got started. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but what's your philosophy? Now, now coming from yep. a music background, I've, you know, I've been in there, I've watched you work and you run that pro tools and you're yeah. running all this stuff <laughs> yeah. that nobody should have to do. It's your job to do that because Absolutely, you're yes. working with all these yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. It's not the software that makes people sound good. To no, you, it's what not, is it? Not. Well, it, it's, it is at first, I mean, first of all, it's the, well, it's the talent. First of all, if you don't have, if you don't have the ability to do this um, and there's very few people that honestly that I've come across that couldn't with work and the time and the desire to do it. Mm -hmm. be successful at it um but then it's the space the space it becomes then the most important thing that you're dealing with and then from there becomes finding something for me what i suggest mics is finding a mic that's going to pick up and represent your voice most authentically for the quality of your voice because some some mics are going to sound better on some people to my ear mm -hmm. um from a musical standpoint the tone and timbre and all these things that i that i listen for 
Um, and I found this, you know, pr primarily for myself, the very first time I ever used, I was a studio and I used a sound deluxe mic mm -hmm. and everybody in the studio went, wow, that's what you really sound like. Because it was the first time that a microphone captured my voice as it sounded in, in person in real. So that, that was, you know, so I listened for a lot of those things. My philosophy comes from um, instruments mm -hmm. and how I, specifically dealt with parents buying instruments for their children when they're first starting out how to buy instruments. So that's my philosophy is based on that. And it changed a lot over the years. Originally, my philosophy was, well, just go buy a $99 clarinet or a $99 trumpet. And if the kid doesn't like it, no big deal, you throw it away. So problems with that that I ran into. And when I was um, studying my master's at Boston University, this actually came up, this specific question came up. And we had a long discussion over the course of days and weeks about how do you talk to parents about what to buy their instrument. Not, not every parent can go out and buy the best instrument. And sometimes you have to buy, buy what you can afford. Right. So my philosophy is to buy the best thing you can afford. Mm -hmm. Invest in something that's going to be quality. You're going to have a piece of equipment that's going to last. And you're going to find something that is going to probably make you sound more the way you think you should sound if you're in a larger studio and a student who plays instruments that's easy to play, easy to operate and makes them sound good is more likely to continue with that instrument. So I've taken that philosophy into, into voiceover that if you have a setup and you go into your studio in your space on your microphone and your equipment, and you sound just as good as you did, if you were at my studio or Lime or any of the big studios in LA, you're going to go, wow, I, I really like doing this. I like the way I sound. I'm really excited about, can sound I sound so good and I want to keep doing this versus man I really wish that I could sound better at home and that I didn't sound so terrible on this microphone and I hate it because I hate listening to myself on on my microphone or, or the, the equipment that I have or it's too difficult to operate right um, so my philosophy is is basically buy the best thing you can afford you're you're going to sound more like the way you think you want to sound from a musical standpoint and at the very least at the end doesn't work out you have something that you invested in that you can resell and probably make some money back on as opposed to just having a disposable trumpet clarinet saxophone interface microphone right okay so and we are very different in that <laughs> I, I i well not being a musician <laughs> right. you know i can play a kazoo i can mm. play three chords on a ukulele right. that's that's about it that's all you need on a ukulele anyway that's, that's every that's song true, add that, one more chord and you can play every song ever written. i gotta let you gotta teach me the other <laughs> yeah, chord. exactly um but any, minor you'll be set okay i do i know it minor. Okay. Okay, good, good. That, okay okay anyway uh my philosophy is is keeping it to the basics mm -hmm. uh you know do i believe in having a great microphone you know like you said you want to have the most expensive thing get the th best thing you can afford the best thing you can afford yeah mm -hmm. it's always a matter of to me it's always the space absolutely you know, yeah where it yeah. where is it you're going to be recording yeah. Uh, we, you know, I find that if someone has a really nice walk-in closet, you know, that's in a reasonably quiet yeah. place, I just saved them six thousand dollars. Walk-in closets are great. Oh, they're fabulous. They're phenomenal, especially with lots of clothes in. Yes. Them. Uh, yes. so you know, generally, I'm always like, let's find the best place in your place of residence. Yeah. That's quietest, and that will, you know, not reverberate very much. Yeah. And if it's, you know, if you've got a blank wall or it's in somewhat of an empty space, yeah. how do you treat it? And I find, especially with a lot of beginners, the major problem they have is over projection. That's oh, yeah. what causes yeah, yeah. many, many acoustical problems because the louder you talk, the more right. the acoustics of the room come into play. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, I teach people use your indoor voice. You mm -hmm. know, you're only talking to one person. Yeah. You know, if you're listening on the radio, yeah, there might be thousands of people listening to you, but there's only one person listening to you at a time and you're trying exactly. to get a, an emotional, personal connection with them. Yep. So you use your indoor voice like you're having a cup of coffee. And, you know, so can we talk about diarrhea? Right. You know. <laughs> You know, that, that sort Can of we thing. not? And, we not? Well, or we don't have to, but <laughs> but if you have to talk about it, you know, do it in a way that is in a very exactly. personal way. Yeah. Because if you talk quietly, 
and you've got a good microphone that's not noisy, which yeah. is really the problem. I think a lot of people, you know, when they buy a cheap yeah. USB mic yeah. or a mic under say a hundred bucks, and you see a lot of, that. or there's a, there's a bunch that people have been buying under the forty nine dollar range oh, the 50 that have been. Um, I've seen way too many of these. Yeah, um, and they're generic. If it, if it's a generic microphone on Amazon, it's going to sound like a generic microphone on Amazon. Right. You're better than that if you want to be a talent and and you can do better than that. Right. Don't buy yeah. stuff off Facebook. <laughs> but my entire wardrobe is based off Facebook these days, man. They, well, they know me really well. Right, if, if it looks right, if it looks good, it is good. But right. you know, when it comes to microphones, that's not necessarily the case. Yeah. Uh, but to me, it's always acoustics first. Absolutely. No sound yeah. coming in, mm -hmm. minimal reflection. Yeah. And 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 I I learned that from you. I mean, I changed my or I, I, I that became my go to after all of the, the, oh, now the years of us really discussing good. back and forth <laughs> is definitely yeah start start with the space start with the space yeah Absolutely. uh second is proper microphone technique mm -hmm. and yeah. people don't if they're like is this proper mic technique i you know i find why is the mic upside down so you don't so you get you can see your script mm -hmm. and you're not you, you really want to forget the microphone is there. Yeah. I mean, sometimes you see, you know, you know, video of people doing voiceover and they're like really getting into it. Yeah. I find, especially if people see pictures of people using a microphone like that, they're usually wearing headphones and there's always a pop screen. And it's the not headphones on right. really tight. And they're, yeah. yeah. It's not a picture of someone doing voiceover. It's probably right. somebody singing. Probably. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and that's not the same thing when you're singing, you're using a lot of SPL. You're, mm -hmm. you're really pushing the mic. You don't have to use as much gain, but when you're talking subtly and quietly, you got to push the gain. And if you have an interface that has a preamp, that's eh, right. not going to get hissing. Yeah. Yep. So it's important that you use the microphone properly, that you have a microphone that is not overly sensitive, especially mm -hmm. if you're in a marginal environment right. and try and, you know, find something that's, you know, a, 150 to 200 dollars you should be a, a good mic to start with yeah and as yeah. i like to say yeah yeah you yeah. don't you don't buy great equipment to get work you work to get great equipment yeah which yeah. I, falls in line with your your instrument analogy yeah absolutely well. and, the, and the better you become you know you buy a better guitar and then you sound better but you know a great guitar player can make a, a crappy guitar sound really good that's if true you know how to you know how to how to work the instrument if you know how to work the instrument with the microphone and then the other thing also is make sure you know Make sure you know which is the front of the microphone because it is a surprising amount of people. Why does it sound yeah. muffled? Wow. It's, Talking into the back of a microphone. Yeah. It's, it's, it's usually the reason for that. Yeah. That's, that's one of the most common problems that I've run into in this last 18 months is people just buying or <laughs> talking into or the, talking into the, into the, into the, bottom, the bottom of the microphone. Of the well, because, you know, you see, you know, you see it on, a lot of people look probably, you know, the, the RE20, right? Where you right. talk in the front of it and they right. think, oh, well, it's a silver microphone. It looks like that microphone and a radio. And so we're going to like, you know, the 416, we're talking into the front of it. Right. But this, you're talking into the side of it because that's where the capsule is. Right. And you got the name on it. It's got the, you know, so oh, talk into the logo, talk into the logo and the pickup pattern. Yep. Especially here on the Harlan Hogan mic. Yeah. Which is and it's so nice when that is. I love it when that's the solution. Turn your microphone. Cool. There you it's go. It's amazing. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> it's a miracle. Yep. It sounds fabulous. And, but I always preface it with, don't be offended if I ask you this question. <laughs> you're not the first person I've asked this question of, and it happens more frequently than you think. But are you sure you're talking into the right side of the microphone? Right. And nine times out of ten, they're like, oh, I'm not. I take the pop. Let me take the, the foam off the top of it. Oh, wow. It's not a front fire microphone. <laughs> right. So, yeah. What we call a side address microphone. Side address. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Now, I've got you on the 416 yep. here, which, you know, mm -hmm. it's, there's also a different technique to that. But yeah essentially yep. the same it's it's all positioning and keeping the yep. mic like at eye level mm -hmm. and having your copy under here and forgetting the mic is there and do your yeah. thing as an actor we had yeah. you know myrna velasco on last week and she was she was fabulous because mm -hmm. she's just not into the microphone she's right. just into doing the voice exactly and that's yeah. you know what i find the character and, in, and into the character yeah. yeah i think a lot of people get lost with the sound of their voice Absolutely. And yeah. that's not yeah. what voiceover is about. No. Unless you got a great set of chops like Tim Friedlander. But but you know, know but but even you know what this is now is a lot of non announcer, right. conversational right. people who don't do voiceover because they want that reality. Right. They want the realism in this. And this is I mean I made a reference uh, when Murder was here to the authentic authenticity that happens in that first read. Mm -hmm. 
Because a lot of times in that very first read you have, you're not thinking about how you sound. You're thinking about trying to decipher the copy and figure out how to make your way through it. And there's this realism, authenticity that comes out in that first read. Right. That a lot of times then gets lost as you try to make this read better and sound more like you're doing voiceover or more like you're doing something with this, with that, with that read. Right. Um, yeah. My last piece, because mm-hmm. it's three pieces. Okay. I mean, oh, yeah. It's yeah. the yeah. acoustics. Yep. It's microphone technique. Yeah. And the one thing that if you came out of broadcasting or if you've done any recording professionally, it's setting proper input levels. Yes. People don't get that. You know, you get yep. these little tiny waveforms. You know, there's it as long as you've got, you know, a nice fat modulation and not mm-hmm. over modulated. Right. And yep. you've got the right mic positioning and you've got the right acoustics. It's going to sound, as I say, the way what it's supposed to sound like. Whistle. Right. Right. There's, a, there's a way it's supposed to sound. Now, yeah. how it ends up on the other end by the end user, an right. engineer, a producer, mm. they're going to do stuff to it. Yeah. Not your job. Mm. Your thoughts? I, I agree with that. I <laughs> oh, mean, good. You know, one of the... Um, know, well, and knowing what that, what that level is, of what what's a healthy record level i've right. actually over the over the last couple of years have started recording lower and lower mm-hmm. higher bit rate higher quality sample rate that i'm recording at right and recording overall quieter volumes than i could take that audio and manipulate as needed you got right. a much bigger range right. as long as it's clean I mean, as long as it's clean yeah. yeah yeah um and that's really my i mean you know i definitely i err on the on the side of less of less volume when i record and then i can edit it up from there as needed when i you know if i do an audition i you know personally i produce my auditions and send them out as if they could go on right you know go to broadcast whatever that may so they sound professional right there's no broadcast standard or quality that we're going for but a professional sounding piece of audio that they could essentially throw into the spot and if they wanted to use the audition um that's where you know when i do my auditions that's what i aim for right because a lot of times they that's where it goes absolutely yeah yeah. And multi- I mean, I've seen probably three or four auditions in the last couple of weeks that said, send us a WAV file because they made us use your audition. That's great. I'm all for that. Like, take this audition. I mean, you know, a lot of times you go in and you, and you do the job and it's exactly like that. It's just use the audition. It right. sounded great, you right. know. And, and it, do what yeah. you need. And they send you money and it's, it's and fabulous. done. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. So our philosophies are pretty much the same. Like you said, they're, they're you've learned close. from me, yeah. you know. Yeah, yeah. As a musician, though, there's a big difference between recording music and recording a voice. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 And, and, and you, you know, you can see, I, I see it a lot with musicians who come in who do voiceover, and especially singers who are so trained. And love to, the mic. Well, love, yeah. love, so focused yeah. on the, the pitch and the tone and the timbre and the placement of the voice, because it has to be in that exact spot. If you're doing opera, you want right. it to be in a certain area. If you're doing, if you're uh, if you're doing musical theater, if you're doing Broadway, all these things have a sound to them. Um, in addition to the character that that you're that you're portraying, right. there's a sound. Um, but the, they, it's a whole different beast. It's a whole different beast, voiceover versus music. And to a certain extent, the microphone, what you're using in voiceover, doesn't matter. And I just said that. Um, Thank you. <laughs> whereas you come in and do music and I'm going through microphones and preamp chains and compression and trying different preamps, to find what's going to most authentically give me that tenor saxophone sound, the way it sounds in my face. I want it to sound that way on the microphone. Right. Um, and the voice, you know, so I guess when, you know, when I go back to the, my sound deluxe example earlier was that that microphone makes my voice sound recorded the same way that I do in person. And mm-hmm. in that sense, all some people are like, that is your, that's your mic right there because that's exactly what you sound like. Right. Your recorded audio sounds exactly like you sound tone, timbre, pitch, all of that stuff sounds exactly the same way you do as if you're talking to me in person. Right. But you have to have a sharp ear to do that. And as a ear, musician, yeah. I'm yeah. sure your ear is a little bit more tuned to that sort of thing than the average person. But, yeah, but, yeah. Yeah. but if someone is just starting out, mm-hmm. does that, does that, does that type of ma- microphone decision matter all that? Not when you're first starting out. I, yeah. It's, I, it's, there is a, you want something that is going to sound good. And as you learn how you, your voice and what sounds good and what sounds right for your voice, then you can grow into microphone selections and right. you can pick from a 416 or U87 or the Gefells. Um, 
Rode, any of these mics, some of the sound that sound right for your voice. Right. Um, you know, I, when I send people send me, send me samples, I don't even ask anymore. I do ask, but I don't read right off the bat. I'm not looking and saying, Oh, they're using a U87. So I, I expect it to sound like this. I listened to it first. Right. I was like, cool. It sounds like you. It sounds clean. It sounds crisp. And if I put that in with other recorded audio that I have from other talent in their home studio, it would fit fine. Great. Mm-hmm. Now let me see what microphone you're using. Oh yeah. Perfect. I, fine. That mic's mm-hmm. going to work right. great for you. But you can't tell if by listening to different people with different mm-hmm. voices in different environments, you could never tell what specific microphone they're using. Not usually. You, you can like a, a, a 416. You can, you can use a pick out. Yeah, four sixteen is a little more specific in its sound, um, but you know a, a U eighty seven versus a U eighty seven clone versus a Rode NT one or a Rode NT one A. A lot of times the Rode NT one A's I can tell mm-hmm. um, tend to be a little bit harsh um, to my ear in relation to other uh, microphones that I've heard. But no, like if you've got a lot of times you can't really tell, and a lot of times is a g- great example is that I. I bought a U87 last year in the middle of the pandemic because as a studio, I need to be able to have a U87. The client's asking for a U87. I can say, great, I have a U87, not a U87 clone or right. copy. Right. Um, a to A and beat them, blind test. Everybody picked the clone as a better sounding <laughs> microphone versus the U87. But you you put somebody on a U87 and you record, record that and listen back and you go, yep, that's what voiceover is supposed to sound like. It's got such the right sound and it feels right. Right. The UD7 feels right. It's the best way I can say it mm-hmm. um, when I hear it, but not for everybody. Right. It doesn't sound great on everybody. Well, um, but everybody hears differently. Absolutely. Yeah. And everybody, yeah. you know, you know, to me, it's, it's always been about, you know, the idea isn't to sound great. It's to sound like you sound like exactly. you want to capture yep. you as you exist. Yeah. And now a good microphone is going to capture you as you mm-hmm. exist. Yep. A, a crappy microphone is going to not do that. Right. But what there you, what's the cutoff between a crappy and, right. and, and a usable mic? Like, right. you know, yeah, we yeah. can, you, yeah. you know, and as we say, when it comes to selecting mics, it's like being, you know, at the, uh, the checkout counter in the supermarket, looking at the candy and mints, which right. one do you pick? Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so, yeah. well, you, you know, you don't pick the generic over here. You pick you know, the stuff that, you know, I guess is the right. best way that I say it. Like there's just, there's a few generic things out there that I've heard a few people buy or that one particular brand people have been buying off Amazon that is not, <laughs> not working. Right. Um, and if, if the only place you can find it is, is on Amazon, if it does not exist anywhere else, that's probably not the mic. you want. Smart. All right. So, now yeah. we know that our philosophies <laughs> sort of mesh. not that far apart. There's no, a, you know, there's no, no. A, yeah. Absolutely. All right. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to answer some of your questions okay. right after these important messages. Don't go away. Hi, this is Bill Farmer and you are watching Voice Over Body Shop. It's great. From voiceoveressentials.com, it's the relationship savior, the multicolor LED VO recording sign, not just a stock on the air or recording sign. It's our exclusive voiceover recording sign. This brilliantly lit LED 20 color beacon tells everybody at home, which is currently everybody, hey, I'm auditioning, recording, podcasting, narrating, or broadcasting here, and a few moments of relative quiet would be very much appreciated. What's more, the wafer-thin remote control lets you choose a multitude of options, from color to brightness, flashing to fade in and out. You can even set up your own personal codes. Red means I'm recording. Blue, playing back. Green, it's a wrap. Plug in the seven-foot-long cord and hang it on a doorknob or wall hook using the included chain. For voice workers, silence really is golden. And gold is one of the 20 colors you can choose from. Order yours now for just $69.95 from voiceoveressentials.com. That's voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Look what you made me do. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. 
Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. And we're back. We are on voiceover body shop. And, uh, we have to talk about one of our great sponsors, mm -hmm. great company. You know, we, we, you know, we know Robert Marshall, who's yeah. the president of source elements mm -hmm. and he's a guy that will help you out if we ask him, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, and it helps to know those types of people, yeah, but they have a great product. It's called source connect. Yeah. And for years and years and years, the, the professional standard in studio to studio communication was ISDN. ISDN. You had to have this expensive box and you had to dial the number and usually you had to pay for the charges. Right. It was yeah. a pain in the tuchus, I'll tell you. <laughs> it's gone by the wayside. Finally, yeah. George and I have been doing this show for 10 years and we had been predicting the end of ISDN for 10 years. Happened last week. It, I, I, I saw the, I saw <laughs> it in, saw the, the, in the LA awesome. times. Yep. ISDN is dead. <laughs> um, but the best way to today because everybody's got internet yeah and an expensive way and an efficient way to do it is with source connect Correct. a lot of people are intimidated by it. uh mm -hmm. you know i have it you have it yep. you, once you get it set up properly which is that's the important step the, right there the though important now, that's and they will, a lot of people skip. and they will help you with source Absolutely. elements yeah they're great to or help with that. tim will help you or mm -hmm. i will help you george will help you we will show you how it's not rocket science but no. once it's set up it's simply a matter of taking your mouse clicking on the icon mm -hmm. putting in your password Connect. and and connecting it's not yeah. it's it really isn't that hard and what it does for you is it allows you and your microphone and your system in your studio yep. to broadcast to another studio in real time They can hear you. They can talk back to you and they can, it's like being yeah. on the other side of the glass. They can even record if, you if they're on the other side of the country. Yep. Absolutely. And, and they can record you, which is important right into your DAW. I take, take source connect right into my pro tools and record and track on pro tools as if that, that quality and the person in my booth sound exactly the same. And, and that's what they get on the other end. Okay. It's, you know, they've improved the technology on it. They've made it. it it's, it's reliable. And you got to have it. So go over to sourceelements.com and check out all the things they have uh, with Source Connect, the different types of Source Connect that they have. Mm -hmm. But start off with something basic. You can buy it monthly. Yep. You can buy a lifetime license. And then you have it. If you're, if you're really committed to your voice acting and you're making money and you are, have to do remote sessions, you have to have Source Connect because yes. ISDN is... Is it really gone? Literally as of last week, they sent out the announcements last week for Los Angeles um, that they were going to be phasing out. I lost mine in 2016 when they went from $49 a month to $750 a month. Yeah. I sold so. mine to Bob Sauer <laughs> in 2012. Oh, nice. And nice. he's still using it. Amazing. I have my codex sitting <laughs> on my desk. It's in my rack. It still sits there. It can be used, yeah. as, a, it can be used as a doorstop. Exactly. But anyway, yeah. go to Source Elements and check them out. Thanks for being our sponsor all these years. We really appreciate it. You're watching VOBS.TV. I don't know why. It's crazy what they do here. I think I'm going to go somewhere else and have a cheese sandwich. And we're back. All right. Answering people's questions. Yep. It, it, that's the thing about this show. When George and I are, are working together on this, mm. the thing we love the most is answering people's questions. We yeah. still, we'd st if you, you got a question for us, you still got time to throw it in the chat room. And uh, Jeff Holman will, if he's still hanging out, he will get that <laughs> question to us, and we will uh, we will answer that question. Uh, first question comes from our good friend sitting out in the desert there, Jack DeGolia. He says, I'm having an issue with Isotope RX-8 on my new MacBook Air M1. There's a lot of things in that sentence. Yeah, but 
I, I think it starts with RX eight, and uh, then Air MacBook Air one M one as well. Yeah, <laughs> but... yeah. Now Thomas, who is the creator of Twisted Wave, mm-hmm. says it's not a Twisted Wave issue. Uh, see trailing message. We'll get there. Isotope says they don't support Twisted Wave. Do you guys have any suggestions? Luckily, I still have my mini running OS Catalina without issues with RX eight. Use your mini running OS Catalina without issues for yeah, RX eight. Well, there, there you go, Jack. <laughs> Next Sorry. question. I mean, so, a lot of so people tough. use RX eight. Now, here's something mm-hmm. we were we were talking about our philosophies, and this is this is one of the things that we sort of got into. Yeah, and that is almost every piece of equipment we use, a couple of minor exceptions, was never designed for doing voiceover. It was Correct. all designed mm-hmm. for making music. Yeah. With the exception, perhaps, of the of this of the the, the four sixteen. Though I gotta say, we have done. All of our all of our rap vocals for the last three years have been on the on the four sixteen, and they sound phenomenal. We do all of our MCs from for the Urban Renewal Project. We've used this four sixteen; it sounds amazing. It's a great mic. Yeah. It's a great mic, and you can hammer yeah. nails with it. And yeah. it's it's a road warrior. Yep. That's what it's built for. It was actually built for electronic news gathering, oh, okay. and you know it's a video mic. But yeah. for some reason, yeah. it, the proximity works really, really nice on it. Yeah, but they're a tank. I throw out my bag when I go on tour and just in my backpack, not a case it, or anything. It's, it's my it's my road mic, too, yeah. when Amazing. I decide to take stuff on the <laughs> right. road. Yeah. Um, but most of it was designed for making music. Uh-huh. And with the exception, perhaps, of Harlan Hogan's VO1A mic. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, they were all designed for, for vocalists or for instrumentation. Yeah. They're not sitting around in boardrooms going... Do we need to make a voiceover microphone? Right. They're not. We're just borrowing all this technology mm-hmm. and using it for our own purposes. Now, how does that relate back to RX-8? Yeah. And people want to, what's RX-8? RX-8 is a sound cleaner. Uh, to me, it's like it was designed to fix old vinyl records. Right, yeah. And, yeah. and, and it's great yeah. at that. It's yeah. fabulous. Yeah. But I find a lot of people really rely on it too much mm-hmm. that they think well i don't have to ha- i can have a marginal space because i can clean it up without yeah, rx8 a different issue yeah you know i yeah. mean usually something like that rx8 not only is it for cleaning up stuff but it's for manipulating the waveforms mm-hmm. and, and digitally stretching it and doing stuff to it that generally you don't have to do right. now why why does jack use rx8 i use it all the time i and what do you use it for <laughs> I use it for all of this, all of those times when I want to salvage a, a great performance with a very minor tech problem. Mm-hmm. Um, the plosive on it is great. Mm-hmm. The declipper is phenomenal on that really? thing. You can yeah. salvage. I've salvaged, you know, I, you know, especially when I'm running, if I'm running a session, I get a talent who gives me something really loud, unexpected. It's a great performance. I can salvage that 99% of the time with the declipper. It- in really, there. it can really get it down it to what it's. How does it do? Amazing! That? I have no idea. It's right. magic. It's isotope. It's it's, they do what they do. Nice. Um, the D. I use the D. The D plosive, and I use the mouth. You have so they do have some like they have mouth D click mm-hmm. that I believe that they um, developed. I believe based on feedback from the audiobook community. Mm-hmm. I'm not. I'm just. But don't hold me to that one. Um, that's what I've heard. Yeah. Um, and I use that a lot of times if I have just some really like some mouth noise, some mouth clicks that I have on a talent again. Or for myself, I use that a lot of times on myself. Um, for my raise, I'll just throw a real basic declicker, a mouth declick on there to get rid of the very subtle stuff mm-hmm. um, that I want to smooth out yeah. on there. Do you do it individually? I do it. I do or, it individually on um, each, the each. section that I want to do it on. I don't wholesale do it on a track, right. um, especially like deep. The deep breath is is in there, but if you do that on an entire track, you end up you end up trying to cut. You're going to end up cutting off transients, so the beginnings and endings of words. Right. And it's exactly. not going to work. But it's a great. Great tool to use judiciously and knowledgeably and to just wholesale throw it on something and just say, here, de-click this entire three hours of audio. <laughs> yeah. First of all, it'll take you forever to do. Right. But um, you know, it's you're gonna end up with artifacts or issues in it a lot of times that um end up causing more problems than if you were to just isolate what you need to get. Um, at least that's the way that I operate is isolate what I need to fix right. and fix those spots. Yeah. Um this is, you know, Jack, I mean, <laughs> luckily you still have a mini running OS Catalina without any issues with RX-8. Unfortunately, you know, the M1s, I had one for a week and I ended up taking it back. Um, and I'm waiting for the next iteration to come out. Um, but, 
you know, I didn't have any issues, but I was running Isotope RX8 and Pro Tools. Mm-hmm. Um, Pre Pro Tools being, um, uh, you know, authorized or uh, approved to work with um, with the M1s, um, and it worked. But it's so hit and miss, and it's there's there's just it's just too much new stuff happening all at once to have any answer for that. I don't I have no answer for it except to say that you, you have a mini running OS Catalina without any issues with RX8. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I don't use RX. I've got Adobe Audition and mm-hmm. I just use the spectrogram yeah. in there. Yeah. I mean, how much, how much do you have to do to your audio to try and do that? All that kind of stuff. To me, everything is physical. If you've mm-hmm. got mouth clicks, hydrate. Mm-hmm. If you've got too many breaths and we I'm sure we both know people yep. that apparently can't get through an entire sentence without taking a breath. Yep. They have this staccato sort of delivery. Well, <laughs> and breath removal is a whole other issue too. Like yeah. It's, it, it's, it, be yeah. careful with that. Right. It's like, <laughs> so. yeah. I mean, you got to be like an athlete. You got to be in good condition. Yeah. You got to be able to read an entire sentence without taking a breath. Well, or I mean, it's the same thing that when we're having, I'm not thinking about, where I'm breathing in this conversation. You're not thinking about where you're breathing in this conversation. You could talk for 45 minutes, not think about one, one possible spot for breathing, but you give yourself a 30 second spot (laughs) on, you know, in, in a, in a, in a script. And all of a sudden you're like, I can't, don't know where to breathe in this spot. I can't get through the (laughs) running out. You get to the end. If you talk, thinking, reading thoughts and not sentences and punctuation and your, your breath will come much more naturally. Right. Um, Is he running twisted wave in, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I am so unfamiliar. I, I, <laughs> well, I my my first my reaction with the first time I opened Twisted Wave. Yeah. Uh, where, where are all my controls? Nope, never use no, that again. Yeah, yeah, I, I want to be able to control everything. So I, I know Twisted Wave exists, and I've seen it enough, and I've used it enough times to know that, <laughs> that I don't know enough about it to, yeah. to be able to answer that question. Yeah. Well, so. that's it. Is he running Twisted Wave in Rosetta? Well, yeah. that's if you've got an M1, it's good. It's, He's gonna it's, probably have to be in Rosetta. It's got to be in Rosetta anyway. I believe so. Yeah. You know, until Thomas fixes it or yeah. it may changes the, the the program. So, yeah. you know, if you don't know what we're talking about, there's a program inside the M1 chip of the new Max that some yeah. programs do not work with it and it translates it in real time to, to work, work with, with the, the M1. M1. Yeah. Yeah. Go figure. That's another another layer of of possible places to things to go wrong, unfortunately. That, absolutely. So. Absolutely. Uh Gracis Kahiria. I, I bet I pronounced that right. Uh, what is your opinion of the Shure MV7 microphone MV7, for okay. work? How does one get a sample out in today's times? MP3. Thank you in That's advance. A couple of questions there. Yeah. Um, well, one, don't. Uh, what's that? Don't use, don't. <laughs> don't use the MV7. I mean, okay. <laughs> I, I haven't used I don't have an opinion, unfortunately. I, 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 I can guess what it probably sounds like. Mm-hmm. I hear it's 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 a really cool sounding microphone. Okay. If you're a professional voice actor, use professional equipment. You know, if you're on the road, you're doing auditions, it's probably great because you can plug it into your iPhone or your iPad. Yeah, yeah. And if you use it properly, mm-hmm. it's going to sound okay if you're in the right environment. But is it going to sound as good as a 416 or a Harlan Hogan VO1A or you know, various other professional XLR microphones. I sort of doubt it. Yeah. Yeah. I, know. I do not know. I don't have, I have not used it or experienced it to know yeah. what it is or how it works. Unfortunately, yeah. so, I, I would, I would not recommend it as a mainline voiceover microphone. Yeah. You know, I would get some professional equipment. That's the most important thing. Uh, Dave G watching us on YouTube. What is the silliest setup Tim has stumbled upon in a home studio? Me too. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. I, I mentioned the bathroom earlier. Yeah. Well, so somebody yeah. actually recording in a bathroom. Um, pretty consistently, I see just lots of microphone reflection shield in a big wide open room, <laughs> yeah. and that just that concept in and of itself is silly because those reflection shields were made for musicians, and they're they reflect. They saw the reflection on one side of the microphone. Right. Then you got that side and that side and that side and that side and right. that side. Exactly. Um, and that generally would be the silliest thing. But um, the bathroom is by far the, yeah. the silliest. Well, yeah. well, one of the things that George and I did, you know, when we started out here in California, is we want people to send in pictures of their studios. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. And <laughs> it, it's amazing the creativity people have yeah. with their studios. Oh, yes. Yeah. I mean, the best one, I, I can't remember her name. It was a bunk bed with mattresses turned upside down, all mattresses. Oh, yeah. You know, with a mattress sort of like hanging, you know, like that. Yeah, yeah, and it sounded okay. <laughs> yeah, you know, and as yeah. George and I always say, if it sounds good, it is good, mm -hmm. which yeah, you yeah. clearly have heard before. Yeah, yeah. Um, but you know, I that was one of my favorites. Uh, walking into people's places, and I'm like, you're recording in here. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know, and they're or they're they're like stuck in a closet. You know, and it's like, do you feel comfortable in here? Does this work yeah. for you in here? Yeah. You know, uh, and then it comes down to the discussion of, do you, is it the room quiet? If the room is quiet, right, that that opens up all sorts of possibilities because yeah. then you're just talking about sound treatment yeah. and 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 you know stuff that's going to reduce the reflections. Yep. But people recording in their living rooms, mm -hmm. vaulted I, ceilings. I, I have to play you this audio after <laughs> we're done. I'm just like, <laughs> what on earth is this person thinking? People don't know what it's supposed to sound like. And they, you know, they say, people say, you've got a great voice. Right. And they, they record themselves and they're, you know, 500 feet from the microphone or right. they're right on top of the microphone. Sorry, Sue. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, you know, that's, there's, I guess a lot of people starting out in voiceover, there's a lot of stuff. They don't know what they don't know. Right. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. And I was like, the, one of the other silliest things that I see a lot is people who use GarageBand and use the voiceover preset in GarageBand. And mm -hmm. I've spent multiple, oh, multiple Band. hours <laughs> tracking down the point where they had turned on. Now I go to it if I ask if they're using GarageBand. The voice, if anybody ever knows, use GarageBand. It always well, has reverb on it. Right. The voiceover yeah. plugin has echo yeah. and reverb. Right. But <laughs> the way GarageBand is set up, you don't know that. Right. In, unless you go in and take apart the preset and find all the hidden stuff that's there. And the first time I found that, I was like, why are you putting echo and reverb on your, why would you have a voiceover plugin? It literally is called, I think it's called voiceover right. or it may be called voice narration plugin right. um, preset. And that's the silliest thing I see as far as the DAWs go. I just, you just shouldn't, <laughs> you shouldn't, <laughs> shouldn't put echo and reverb on your voice. No, um, no that's not ever. your job. No, no. An engineer no. like you, you might be doing a spot and mixing a bunch of different elements yeah. together. You might use reverb. And then reverb. you know how to use it. And then you find the the reverb that's appropriate for the space that the that, that voice is supposed to be in right. and the size of the room and the, the surface that they're on, all of that other stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I I remember doing a pickup with somebody who just happened to be visiting mm -hmm. and he says, I did these things, but the room wasn't that great. You know, can I do them here? I'm like, sure, fine. Yeah. And then we found a reverb that matched the crappy sound of the oh, other room. Right. Yeah. So yeah. and 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 yeah. it and it worked really, really well. Yeah. <laughs> uh Chris Robin asks, IRT mic comparisons. IRT. Why do why do I not know what IRT means? Um does how does a TLM one oh three stand against a U eighty seven? Uh, it's comparing uh, apples uh, and oranges or persimmons and how's an f-150 stand against a, a dodge Mazda ram Miata? yeah well, i don't know yeah. I, I mean it, it's it's you need the right tool for the right job and if they're they're go if it sounds good it, it is, is good, good. Yeah. um <laughs> i mean you know the, the 103 and the ud7 are two very common higher higher end mics that people tr strive to achieve to own that i've found right um the UD7 is kind of, kind of this mythical beast. Now, there's a difference between the UD7 and the UD7 AI. Which the UD7 AI is the newer version of the UD7, and the UD7 a lot of people really like for music is the pre 1980 version of the UD7s mm -hmm. before they changed over and, and changed components and, and capsules. So a lot of people, who, especially for mu music, who are trying to find a UD7, looking for that pre 1980. Or that 1980 version of the U87, and in voiceover, a lot of what you'll find are the purple badged U87 AIs that we'll see in in the studios a lot of the times. Right. Um, I, you know, I I've never had a TLM 103 in my studio, so I can't say how it sounds. I've heard lots of people on a TLM 103. I know the TLM 103 and the 102 tend to be brighter, from what I've heard mm -hmm. in my experience. Um, but you know, a U87 has a very specific U87 sound. And a 103 is going to sound like a 103, which tends to be a little brighter and crisper on, and from what, from what I've heard in my experience. Now, so. I haven't had that experience. 
yeah. I, I had a 103. You know, mm. I, I, I had a, uh, you know, 20 years ago, I was using a, a 3035, an AT3035. Mm-hmm. It was yeah. my first microphone that came with something else. Right. Yeah. 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 You know, and I used that for a while. And then yeah. when my voiceover business improved, I said, I'm going to get myself a TLM one. Yeah. And I used it for many years and did my business improve afterwards? Yes. Mm-hmm. Now, was it because of the TLM 103 or the fact that I had been doing voiceover for several years and got better at right. it and right. moved away from my radio voice right, yeah. and trained myself out of it. Once I got a 416 though, mm-hmm. The, the 103 ended up in its little casket and, Absolutely, yeah. and I yeah. ended up selling it. I just didn't use yeah. it anymore. This thing yeah. is, you know, it, it, yep. it picks you up much cleaner. Like it's designed to hear the human voice yeah. from various different distances. And it makes you sound real, which is why yeah. I like that. Now the TLM 103, what was it designed for? Again, it was designed for, for music, probably, music, probably for vocals vocalists and, or and, horns or horn. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, um, you know, it's, great microphone uh the germans make fabulous microphones you know the the, the neumanns the geffels the yeah. uh you know the the uh, the akg well that's you know that austrian and neumann and geffel are the same company, same company or right. flip sides of right. the well one was or they east were, germany and one was, was west germany, germany. yeah, yeah. Exactly. and now they're <laughs> yeah. together uh yeah I had, I had a geffel mic for a while mm. and, you know but more of a collector's item than anything else right it yeah. sounded fabulous yeah but you know I, I'm of the opinion that it's not the microphone that makes you a great voice actor. It's, yeah, absolutely, it's yeah. the training and all the other things. And if you have a U87, that's not going to make you a better voice actor. No, but if, it, if you yeah. can't read your way out right. of a paper bag, it's it's going right. to prove that you can't. You yeah, know. I mean, U87 is something to, to build up to. I mean, right. I you know I bought my first U87 in December, yeah. and right. and finally because I you know again you know as a studio I needed to have it. Um, I find I use the 416 for my own stuff most of the time, 99% of the time. And when we have clients, given the option of the U87 or the 416, it's 50 50. Yep. So. Last question from the one and only Jeff Holman. Jeff. Yes. Do you like to stand or sit when doing voiceovers, Dan and Tim? That's how I'm feeling. Uh, same here. I mean, you know, yeah. you've got a stool in your studio. I got a stool yeah. in mine. You know, mm-hmm. if, if I'm if I'm doing a long format thing, I was doing a, a long audio brochure this week and I sat, yeah, although yeah. I, I tend to lean, Yeah, yeah. you know, yeah. and you know, if, if I, if it's a high energy thing, I might stand, but most of the time I'm, I've been sitting most of the time, but that's just because I'm old. Yeah. I, I, I stand, stand that 99% of the time, unless it's something that's long, long form that I'm doing. Yeah. Um, or if I'm trying to, you know, if the character calls for, if the read calls for it, um, for a lot of times I was, um, for a while, I was leaning on the back of a chair, yeah, leaning into the mic because yeah. I was trying to do like that real <laughs> relaxed thing and lean <laughs> right. on the back of a chair. I don't know that really helped. Um, yeah. But no, I, I I stand most of the time, and then you know at least for for myself, I'm in and out of the booth, right. boom, 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 back and forth. So I'll do a couple of reads, go out and listen to it, come back in. I don't you know I don't have the time to sit, but something that's long form, right. absolutely. I mean, every audio book that we've done, we have you know we do podcasts, we have you know people coming and doing work with um, Realm it used to be Serial Box. Every single person. Because they're working for a three-hour session, right? And they will sit for three hours, right? Um, and you know how to, you know how to, you have to learn how to breathe differently. You have to learn how to adjust your energy so that you can give that same performance as if you were standing, right? You know, it, it just the physicality changes, changes your performance. Yeah, so. yeah. I'm, you know, I, I've been sitting a lot lately, right? Yeah, <laughs> but, you know. Anyway, thank you for all your questions, and Tim, thank you for answering yeah, well, those questions. Thank you for having me. Hi, this is been, this has been a fabulous <laughs> session. All right, we're going to take a quick break. And we'll be right back to wrap things up after this. Yeah. Hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. The first thing I want to share with you is the plan for these classes, the, the, the five lessons that we're going to do. The first thing is we're going to start with an introduction today, and then we're also going to take a look at what I call the first discipline of voiceover, and that is the art of voiceover, commercials, audiobooks animation, and so on. There's lots of them. In fact, some that you may not even be aware of. And then in the next lesson, we're going to take a look at the second discipline of voiceover, and that's what I call the commerce of voiceover. How to build your business. How to do the things that any business needs to do, but in particular, how to do those things for voiceover. 
In the third lesson and the fourth lesson, because it's such a big topic, we're actually going to do two parts. We're going to take a look at the science of voiceover. And the science of voiceover is the technology that you need to know. In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez, and you're enjoying Dan and George on The VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back. All right. To say goodbye, but I'm glad you've been with us today. Uh, next week on this very show, uh, we won't be on because it'll be Labor Day and Rosh Hashanah, yep. and the missus says, you're not doing a show. <laughs> Air of Rosh Hashanah. It's not going to happen. <laughs> not happening. Uh, but I planned on that months ago, so not a problem. Uh, but we return September 13th with vocal therapist Amy Chapman, who's fascinating, a wonderful lady, and we'll learn about how to take care of your voice. Uh, then on September 27th, Legal Eagle Rob Siglin Paglia will be. And we have him on at least once a year, and people have lots of questions about the legalities yeah. of voiceover. Yeah. Who knew that you could be liable? Because for whatever, all sorts of weird stuff. Yep. Anyway, but he's the guy that he's the guy that knows that knows all that stuff uh we need to thank our donors uh for example uh george whittam senior well, he's not george whittam C. he's just george's dad george <laughs> s whittam i think is his known gotcha name. brian page rob raider patty gibbons ant land productions michelle blanker christopher epperson sandra manwiller thank you for joining us sandra for a fairly new name for us nice. phillips appear Trey Mosley. Shelly Avellino, a woman hey. who I've smoked several cigars with. <laughs> Neither here nor there. And Thomas Pinto. Tom Pinto. Tom Pinto, yes. All righty. Uh, again, if they want to get in touch with you over at the uh, the Soundbox, yeah. how do they do that? Soundbox.la. All right. And if you want to yeah. want some help with me uh, with your home studio and you want to learn it from, from the ground up, which I specialize in for people who haven't done it at all. Yep. Go to homevoiceoverstudio.com and uh, see what I do and get in contact. Uh, we need to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Been with us since day one, 10 years ago. Wow. You know, they said it wouldn't last. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, the makers of Source Connect, VoiceOverHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC demos mm -hmm. when quality matters uh we'd like to thank jeff holman for getting it done over in uh, the chat room giving us all these questions that we love yeah. answering sue Lino for getting it done again as our amazing Ooh. director uh take a bow and uh and of course lee penny for being lee penny and tim friedlander oh, thank you and thank you for being my guest host yeah, well, the last couple of weeks me. yeah it's it been was, great i this is this is this is really what we don't get to talk very much. We don't, no. Yeah, especially over the last 18 months. Not to months. people, at least. We talk to ourselves all the time. Maybe that's yeah. that's that's true. We do talk yeah. to ourselves in the booth. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll be back next time we're back. And uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I'm Dan Leonard. Tim Friedlander. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. BS. Tech Talk. Tech Talk. <laughs> Tech Talk. Take it easy, guys. Cool.